He's back. Okay. I'm sharing now. Ok, ragazzi, tra pochissimo partiamo. Eh? Sto solo condividendo. Well, thank you to start. Sto scherzando. <laughs> <laughs> Tanti anni in Italia. Yeah. You, sì, but anche io. <laughs> I know. Yeah, my italiano is uh, peggio. Sfortunatamente. <laughs> It's a custom Italian. Hey. <laughs> Welcome on board, Federico. Eh, hey, Federico, ciao, ciao. Dai, Emiliano, dai. Always dai. Okay. Sempre dai. Ready to rock. Woo! Okay, drum more friends. We are live now today with my special friend, Mr. John Macaluso hey, from New York. Brother. <laughs> so john welcome on board first of all how are you man tutto bene tutto bene grazie mille grazie man um miliano you taught me two very important things when i came to italia one is the roman diet remember the roman diet yes roman diet and two is roman time remember that one so always an hour late the roman yes. time yeah yes. in new york we can't do that Actually, when I go back to New York, everybody says, John, I can tell you're living in Europe. I say, why? Because you're walking slower, they say. <laughs> yes, because better things need the proper time to do it. So take your time. Con calma. Con calma. Yes, yes. Or, anyway, long, tanto or, tempo, Emiliano. Let me say, John, in time. In time, oh, you remember. <laughs> Hi, Emanuele. Hi, Max. Hey, Welcome Max. on board, guys. So, okay. My first question for this interview is, John, what you can tell us about your uh, recent European tour with the band Holy Mother? Um, I got a call about a week before the gigs. It's usually the way it works with me. And a friend of mine named Mike Torelli, Italo Americano, he's a singer for a band called Holy Mother. I've known him for 35 years. And he called me and said, please, John, help out. My drummer cannot come to Europe. For some reason, I don't know if it was work or whatever. So typical me, I said, okay. Um, then I had to learn all the songs. Pretty easy. But I got to tell you, It wasn't an easy tour. You know, I was filling in as the drummer, but there was four bands. And, you know, in festivals, you know, you play the gig, then the next drummer has to come, same drum set, adjust everything, next guy. So it was, um, it was a lot of work, but the gigs went great. And, um, yeah, I was pretty much helping my friend out. Um, I always say that, you know who your friends are when you have to move out of your house? Yeah, can you help me out on Saturday afternoon? And when you have to do a solo album. Hey, you want to play on a track? Yeah, I mean, that's how you know when your friends are. But um, yeah, I was pretty much helping out my friend Mike. He was in a bind. He couldn't get a drummer. So this stuff was pretty easy. Learned it and went on the road. And uh, we did 17 shows in a row. There was no break. So it seems like that's the way it happens these days. Um, you know, the music business now, a lot is unfortunately trying to save money. So that's why bands will sometimes unfortunately record and program things or quantize things because all this stuff is kind of like the music business went so down, everybody's trying to save bread. So as a studio guy or a session guy, um, it's difficult because a lot of times I have to learn the music sitting on my couch and then you fly to wherever and you rehearse that day and then you do the gig and that seems to be a trend so for students i try i try to get them ready for this you know i'm gonna try to get them ready for it i say you might have to jump in tomorrow and do a gig so you 
you can't, I'm very against reading on stage, especially if you're playing rock and heavy metal. So I have methods to teach people how to learn songs very quickly, keep it in their head. Uh, tempos are very important. So I, I kind of teach my students this whole thing because it's, um, today's world is kind of like uh, only the strong survive. So yeah. you, you really got to be ready for anything. You know, you might not ever play brushes, but you got to learn it. And you might use it one day, you might not. So uh, anyway, the tour went great. And um, yeah, I mean, uh, it was it, the bass player I played with is now my favorite bassist. He's unbelievable, a guy named Wayne Banks, right? I never met him before. We did the tour and he's just unbelievable bass player. So, you know, strange things come from everywhere sometimes. You gotta keep your mind open, you know? And important, I think everybody can't always be online. One thing cool about the tour is you're meeting people again, physically. That's the way it used to be. And you could kind of um, feel if the person you, you want to continue with or not. Online is crazy. I mean, I've been recording albums for years now, and I never meet the bands. You know what I mean? Yeah. So, uh, yeah, the world changed, but drummers have to be ready for everything these days. You know? Yeah, yeah. I can imagine the the feeling to be on stage again, to see again the people under the stage and really? feel the it's energy really. from the crowd. You know, I always consider myself more of a studio guy. Like I love the studio because I say records are for life. One great gig might have, uh, you know, five people there and it's gone for life. So I kind of dedicated my life. That's a bad tattoo of a 45 disc. <laughs> <laughs> I dedicated my life to recording, but the studio gets lonely. Everybody needs uh, that human contact. And it's been so long since COVID and everything. I did a tour a couple of months ago and um, I just did this tour. And yeah, it's amazing to see people back watching. You need that. You need the feedback. You know what I mean? So it was cool. And I think that all this is going to change the world for the better as far as like music. Because I was impressed at how many people came out already, you know, but I think it's going to get better and better and better. And people just want to, they want to go out again, man. You know? Yeah. So. Yeah. And uh, as we told a uh, few minutes ago before uh, the live stream is important to do live shows is important to talk with the people. Mm -hmm. And uh, people need to understand that the music is alive. It's not dead. It's not dead. You can't kill rock and roll. Yeah, you know never. Is? I think you're, you're too young for this. You know the movie, The Swallow. Yeah, Kill yeah, us. I know, I know. I grew up in Long Island, actually where the real incident supposedly happened. Right? There was this guy named Frank Mundus, I think. And he was... Um, that whole story is based on a true story about catching the shark. But in 1975, when that movie came out, nobody went into the water for three or four years. They were paranoid of sharks. The COVID, it's important that people get out because I think there's a lot of people that still have that paranoia in their head. And I think they're afraid to go out. And it's going to be years, not, not months, until everybody kind of starts to trust it again. So I kind of relate this whole time period with the movie Jaws. Eventually, you say it's only a movie. But unfortunately, this whole thing was real. But there's still a paranoia. You know, it's, it's, it's still a... It's, but I'm impressed at how many people are actually coming out. So let's just hope it goes, it snowballs into something big. And it becomes like the 70s where concerts were everywhere and, you know, live shows everywhere. So I'm hoping. But it looks good, man. Hey, Basta! <laughs> it's we have my a special family. guest, guys. Is uh, John's Mooney. dog called Mooney? My my dog is named after Keith Moon. The yeah. problem is he, he hates noise. If I hit a cymbal, he'll be in a bedroom for three days. He hates noise. <laughs> yeah, I remember. He's afraid of the cymbals. You met Mooney many times, man. Mooney loves you. He told me. Yeah, I know. I know. He's a bad. He's a good dog. He's a good dog. Hey, until you get a mad. And so, John, about the new Michael Romeo album. I heard the complete album 
We did. I think it's fucking better than the first one. The first one was a really, really good album. I liked a lot. I hear this second and I say, wow, better than the other. It's, it's incredible. More mid tempos. It's really catchy. One second. I'm sorry. Manu, take this. Tell me, bro. Yeah, the, the Romeo album, I'm so psyched about it. It's one of those albums where, um, okay, Ark, Ark Burn the Sun, when that came out, I said, it's perfect. Leave it. Don't complain about anything. Because you always have something in your head. The ride symbol could be louder. Burn the Sun was like the perfect album for me. Romeo is up there, too. I, like, I really, I'm confident. I don't have to say anything. I just hand it to someone and, you know, they could listen. And it's getting great reviews. And I'll talk to you about the process of how we made it. But anyway, yeah. thank you. I'm glad you like it, man. Yeah, yeah. It's a, it's a great album. And it's really interesting for me here how you work on the songs. Because uh, everything is in the perfect sight. See, Mike Romeo is very, very... Um, He's a good drummer. He can play drums. So what he does, he, um, he programs a drum set, right? But he knows how to program. And he, he does all the demos. He sends me the, um, the track with the reference drums. He said, do what you want. He actually writes it with me in mind, which is cool. He's really, he's a brilliant guy, man. He writes it with me in mind. And he says one thing. Follow my kicks. You do whatever you want on the snare. You do whatever fills you want. You could do all your linear stuff. Just keep my kick pattern. So I pretty much have to write my whole drum part around the kick. He says, do what you want uh, as far as fills and everything. And another rule is if I play a triplet, don't play straight 16th notes. Obvious stuff. Like if, if he goes, digga, 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 I shouldn't be, da, 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 you know, kind of follow. So what I did with the album, I never did before. Um, actually, I experimented with Labyrinth when I was doing it. Trying to make like, um, trying to do fills to match the guitar. So if you said, um, most drummers, your whole life, you spend going from left to right. Music doesn't do that. The guitar might be, duh, 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 duh. so why should you go down? So with Labyrinths, I started experimenting, trying to make a melody between bells and toms. But on this Romeo album, I really nailed it. I mean, he he's like so advanced musically, so you're never going to be able to play the notes. I'm not Terry Bozio, but you can get somewhere close. So with the Romeo record, there's a lot of fills that might be following his guitar thing. And this is the first album where it, it really, for me, it worked. It worked. So there's a lot of melody in that. Um, and then he likes the linear things I do. So if you're keeping a bass drum pattern, um, between I could be, you know, uh, I could hit Chinas, I could hit bells. So I tried to experiment also with my uh, percussion toys to get close to his, um, his melodies. And there's a lot of that on the record. Uh, it's the first album I feel that I was successful in following, um, you know, following the guitar musically and doing linear, but not crazy linear. Pretty much filling in the holes between his kicks and trying to do it melodically. Um, yeah, I'm gonna do a couple of playthrough videos I'll send them to you. I'm going to put them out. And um, it's basically to show people that just because there's a kick pattern, you don't have to play hi-hat eighth notes and snare on two and four. You know what I mean? That rhythm can be done so many times. You could do a half-time snare. You could double-time it. And melodically, you can play in between. So, um, yeah, drummers, check out the Romeo album because there's, there's a lot of kind of special things in there, you know? And use headphones. <laughs> yeah yeah okay so the concept of this album for the drum parts is really simple just play the kick drum as michael wrote the parts exactly then use your creativity on the rest of the drum set exactly i mean for example 
um, Malmsteen on an album called Alchemy. Hey, Giuseppe. Uh, on an album called Alchemy, uh, that I did, the first um, Ingve album I did, he said at the end he wants me to go do kind of a solo. So there was the, it's called Quantum Leap. So on, the last song on the record, um, it's like a floor tom pattern, dum dum digga 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 dum dum, kind of like an Aldemiola style thing. And Malmsteen said, "Go, go, go, play. You know, do do kind of solo. Just keep the rhythm." And I did it, and it's maybe it's like 20 minutes long. I was just messing around, and he kept the whole thing pretty much. So the end of the Alchemy album is me going out with a solo. Romeo wanted to give me a spotlight, but he didn't want to do like a drum solo thing. So he actually wrote a song called um, Alien Death Ray um, with me in mind. And he kind of mixed like a Stravinsky thing. He's a brilliant dude. Um, with, uh, I don't know, kicks, like a Dave Weckl style thing. But he didn't want it jazzy. He wanted it heavy. But he gave me kicks and he, he wanted to make it symphonic. So if you hear the song Alien Death Ray, which is a bonus track on the record, it's the last record. Um, that whole thing Romeo wrote for me. And he said, hit the kicks, but fill between and build, build, build. Don't just make it like a drum solo. So I'm really appreciative to him for doing that. It's another you know, brilliant guitar player I played with that really trusted me and wanted me to go. Him, Ingve, I mean, certain people, you know, they want to feature the drummer. There's other bands that want you to just play the beat. They don't want to feature the drummer at all. In fact, there's been people I worked with who actually cut some of the cool stuff I did. I don't know why, but um, yeah, I'm really appreciative to Romeo for doing that. And Malmsteen, man, you know, like, give the drummer some. <laughs> cool, cool. It's great. I like the idea of the, um, the drum transforming itself in a percussion section in an orchestra concept cool cool you, you know me for many years and how many times have you how many times have i come up to you with my cell phone and said emiliano help me out here you know what i mean i don't really i'm very low tech yeah but i do but i got really into electronics maybe 40 years too late but i mix electronics on my acoustic kit i got a wave drum i got some mock drums i have an electric pedal and kind of like a Danny Carey style thing in modern yeah. days. It originally came from Bill Bruford. I'm a big King Crimson fan. And the album Discipline, he had Octobands, he had Simmons, he had an acoustic snare. So that's what I do these days. Instead of having the band program it later and put um, an electric drum or a timpani, I use the wave drum on my kit. I get the sound and I play the real track and I put the percussion in the actual track. And since the track, the electric is MIDI, um, they might, you know, they could actually put their sound in, but I want it to feel right. So I do everything together, electrics and acoustics. I don't overdub after. And there's some stuff on the Romeo album like that. And then there's some stuff where I just only played uh, electronics, you know, to get like timpani sounds and orchestral sounds. So on the album, there's some um, instrumental tracks and, uh, yeah, it's basically me on electronics or some stuff Romeo on programmed and I played over it. So, you know, cool. I'm getting my tech, man. I always say, you know, I'm a, I'm a drummer. Anything with a power button makes me crazy. <laughs> I remember you maybe five years ago on stage with Labyrinth in Rome and uh, you have some electronic stuff. Exactly. On your drum set. I exactly. remember the sounds. You can see the video Jin, D J I N N, and it's a it's a track I did a playthrough video uh, for the first Romeo album. Yeah, I remember. Yeah, and a good I, track. I, used, I used all my stuff. I used it, the electronic pedal, which I use on the left foot, and I like kind of like a like um kind of like a rap style bass drum. <laughs> I do that, and then I got the wave drum. So pretty much the, the video gin, you could see everything I used on uh, the Romeo record. Yeah, mixing electronics and acoustic. It's cool, man. It's cool. Yeah, bro. It's totally cool. And what about you? 
you are working on a new solo album or a new band yeah you know one thing that uh i started touring again i've done three tours since the covid thing i mean it's cool i'm working but honestly you know i started off as a songwriter before i even played drums you know i was writing songs as a kid here's my first hit all right i'm gonna tell i'm gonna sing you my first song swimming in the pool who is very cool is very cool swimming in the pool who swimming in the pool is very cool that was my first um that was my first chorus but um now all, all kidding aside it's time to make my own music again like i did with arc and union radio there comes a time you're working which is cool but life goes quick i don't know where i'm 54 years old case of chess so what happened uh -huh. so i think it's important to get your own music out there get your own lyrics out there do your own drum patterns so i'm itching to do something new i don't know if it's going to be a band like arc or it's going to be another union radio but it's going to be something uh i'm going to put all my effort into you know no matter what the music business is like i think it's important to continue to make music man that's what it's about yes mm -hmm. it's important to continue to make music and it's important to continue express yourself exactly hey i got a lick i got a i think um you gave me an idea for a chorus now <laughs> let, let, let me know in private chat about this idea hey i got 20 percent, man you got 20 percent <laughs> Thanks, I miss man. you, man. Me manke. Tanto tempo. It's been a long time. You too, bro. Long, long time. Say hello to your family. I love your family. Say hello. Thanks, thanks. They love you too. Yeah, great people. Great people. I miss that morning cappuccino. Your mother had it was like a chalice of coffee. Remember the morning cappuccinos? Yeah. Unbelievable. The super big cappuccino. <laughs> Because a big a big breakfast make your day bigger. Uh, oh, there's another chorus. Yeah, <laughs> we are we are writing an album now. Just talking. Exactly, exactly. I got notes here, man. Don't worry about it. Yeah, yeah. But about, the, about the Romeo album, Emiliano. Um, you know the Ozzy albums, Blizzard of Oz and Diary of a, Diary of a Madman, the first two Ozzy solo albums. That was one session. Lee Kerslake was the drummer, the drummer from Uriah Heep. Um, so those albums were, the rhythm tracks were recorded one session. That's what, that's what happened with the Romeo album. Some stuff you're hearing on the new album is actually stuff I recorded from the first album. Then Romeo said, he's like, you know, I'm going to do a second album. I'm going to use some of the old stuff, but here's some new stuff. So what we did, we kept maybe four tracks from the old one. And then... Uh, I went to San Marino, basta, to Simone Mulanoni, you know, Simone. Oh, yeah, the Domination Studio. Yeah, he, he's the best. And um, I got him in the Romeo thing. You know, Romeo wanted me to come to America originally. I said, wait, I could get an amazing sound with an amazing engineer. And Romeo knew Simone. So he trusted us, and we did everything up in San Marino. But what we did, Romeo kept four tracks or three from the first album, and then he sent me new stuff. And I went up to San Marino and recorded the new stuff. The day my wife came to pick me up with the drums, she said, oh, we have to go into lockdown. This is before everybody in Italy was going into lockdown. I said, what the hell is lockdown? She said, oh, where we are is a red zone. So we got to go into this uh, quarantine. So I remember coming home from San Marino. I just finished the Romeo record. And the next day I had to go into lockdown before they were talking about it in Italy. It was like two weeks before. Two weeks later, all of Italy was in. So in the beginning, it was cool. My flams were killing. I was practicing on the pad. I'm like, this is going to be great. After a couple of months, man, you start to go crazy. But, um, yeah. you know, but actually some of the tracks, um, a track called Parasite, one of the last tracks on the record, was from the first album. And uh, what the, the other one, Machine, uh, whatever it's called, the, um, the triplet one, that was done on the first session and uh that one romeo wanted to do like um kind of like a uk style thing like his alan holdsworth uh style so um 
yeah, on that on that song, there's a big breakdown, and I do kind of a you know straight odd time beat, and Mike goes out with like a Holdsworth style. But the, the influence is from the band UK. Um, anyway, so the, the album was supposed to be pretty much one session, but then he's always thinking. He got new ideas and everything, and we went to San Marino and recorded the new stuff. And it's been a while, man. I mean, I think that was a couple of years ago. So finally, the album came out last month and it's doing great, man. I mean, it's got amazing reviews and people are digging it. And I'm just happy. It's good to have something out there that you're really proud of. And you don't have to tell people. Song number two could have been mixed louder with the hi-hat. I mean, forget all that. It's one of those records you could hand to someone and uh, you don't have to say a word. And so I'm really psyched about this album, man. It's better than the first. Yeah, I'm really happy about it because uh, all of us needs to hear some new good music. Exactly. This is it, man. War of the Worlds Part 2, you can check it out. It's on Inside Out Music, which actually signed ARC. I mean, we were on Inside Out, my band ARC. Uh, great label. They really understand the prog and the metal stuff. They really understand, you know, it's not just one of those labels who says, oh, these guys are popular. Let me sign them. They really dig into uh, their artists, you know? So check it out. War of the Worlds Part 2, Michael Romeo. And check out Alien Death Ray. That's the song with the drum solo. It's the last song on the record. It's a bonus track. So if you're really smart, you start at the end of the album and you listen to the beginning. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Only the smartest guy will do this. I always said that about you, Emiliano. You're one of those smart guys. For sure, bro. You know, I got to okay. tell you, man, I remember years ago, and I thought it was bullshit. You go, John, in September, I'm going to start working out and I'm going to get myself, you know, I'm going to get in shape. And I, I was like, yeah, everybody says that like on Sunday night. On Monday, I'm going to start. But you did. You did it. Yes, man. yes. Bravo. It's three here and a half. I start practice uh, uh, with some uh, uh, home workout. Then I start go to the gym to lift. Then the COVID back me to the home workout. And since uh, July, I'm doing powerlifting really seriously. And yesterday I had my third competition. And how did you do? How did yeah. you do? You, you did good? Yeah, yeah, not bad, not bad. Uh, I'm really happy because uh, last week I had uh, two bad day. Uh, with uh, big pain on my stomach so I was uh, really weak yesterday mm -hmm. but uh, I did my best and at the end I was uh, placed at the fifth place how many were there five no fortunately <laughs> not uh, we were 10 Bravo. In, my part, in my part of the competition we were 10 Bravo. Good job, Meliana. Good job. You did it. But always remember this. No matter how much you lift, I can still kick your ass. Yeah. <laughs> Touche. I love you. So, bro, and uh, what about your new drum book? Because I know you are working on an amazing book about uh, linear drumming. You know that I love so much your way to teach and practice the linear drumming. So, I'm really excited to know when it will be released. You know, finally, I've been doing it for how many years? I can't even tell you. Linear drumming, for anyone who doesn't know, is when no two notes connect together. Everything is separate. So your basic disco beat is actually linear. Now, again, like the Romeo album, uh, the, the whole idea of my book is like a phrase, kind of like Led Zeppelin. You can say that the song remains the same. With the linear book, the beat remains the same. So Ooh, Romeo is a per perfect cool example. Cool name. Exactly. The band is going to love you because you could do your, you could annoy the band by doing Cafoni, the Vunque, or you can get your drumming chops and musicality out by using linear. I got into linear from a guy named Sonny Emery. I saw him open up a Bozio clinic when I lived in California decades ago. And I knew, I said, none of the metal guys are doing this. Not, like, I, I'm going to jump on this. So 
I took what he did. He's kind of like um, uh, fusion, gospel, R&B, you know, that kind of drummer. Incredible. But I said, wait, what is he doing there? Like Cobham, he had the left hand on the hi-hat, and the right hand was going all around the kit, making music. And then he would switch. And it was always the same groove. But in between, he was playing, like, amazing stuff. And I instantly I said, I'm taking that. I'm stealing it. I'm going to hide it. Because none of the guys that I'm in my realm are doing that. So I went off, and I, I just got obsessed with it. And now it's a big part of my thing. So um, basically, I'm writing this book. Since I was in PIT, which is 1987, <laughs> I've been Ooh. working. So, so when you've been doing something that long, the hardest thing is now I call the lobster claws, the ostrich. Egg. How to? What are you going to cut? You can't use 30 years of material. You have you have to cut, and that's the hard point. That's the hard part about it. So I wrote the book maybe three or four times, and I said this is done, and then. When you listen to Linear on its own, it could all sound the same because the beat remains the same. So I said, I'm going to take it back and I'm going to do methods, different methods. One method is if you're into Linear and you're playing your basic beat, I call it round table Linear. What you do now, you play it. Let's say we will rock you. Dum, dum, ba, dum, dum, ba. In between, you got this. With that, you can do anything, electric drums around the kit. So what I did, one example, take the We Will Rock You beat. I'm going to go down all my toms. Round table. I start at the high tom. I go down. Then I take the, the hand back. You could do bells. You could do cymbals. You could do two on each drum. You could do three on each drum. So... If you hear that on record, you say, what the hell is this guy doing? But when you see it, you see how easy it is, and you can take it and do your own thing. You could do odd times now. So now your kick might be on one. The next measure, it might be your tom. So it's, it's like an endless, the whole book is an endless study. Take what I show you and run with it. There's another one called, um, I call stairway linear. This Alexa doesn't understand me. She only speaks Italian. And I'm, my Italian's not so good. Yeah. Sometimes I'm like, Alexa, ritroduci. Anyway, um, another one is stairway linear. All right. I'm going to, if you have, if you have like um, your basic kit, stairway linear, let's take We Will Rock You. You're going to do floor tom, ride cymbal, ride bell, China, and then back. The cool thing is you could control where the one is. You can keep it in 4-4, four, four. you can do it in odd time. I do two-handed stairway, which, where you can do hand-to-hand. -hand. Now the right hand is not only playing in the holes, it's hand-to-hand. -hand. So if you do a kick, your next hand is gonna be left because it has to be right, left, right, left. It's pretty much endless. So the book is called United Sounds of Separation, meaning everything is separate, but as a beat, now it's united. You're keeping the beat the same, but you're also adding melody, right? So it's, it's a complete other realm. It's like a new, um, another dimension. So United Sounds of Separation. I did it three or four times because I said, I don't want it to sound the same. I want to make methods. Finally, I'm done. I'm done. Now, pretty much I got to get it transcribed. I'm doing a video too. So if you buy the book, you could also buy the link to the video. And then you can see everything right there. Me and you are used to, you know, many years ago reading books. It, there was no YouTube when you started, right? Yeah. I mean, YouTube was like, nobody would believe it when I was a kid. Um, so now it's pretty much if you want to see what Neil Peart did, you just go to the video. For me and you, it wasn't that way. Books were really important. And I think it's important for every drummer to take a book and read the book. And the video could come later. You know what I mean? But first, you should actually sit and work with yourself and a book. But the linear thing could be very complicated if you just hear it and you don't see it. Because it could be right hand, left hand. Um, you might have a different setup than I do. So I'm putting a video with the book. And you, you can get both or you can get separate. But I think the video is important for this thing. And uh, Yes. 
It's endless, man. I mean, I do, I do, I have sections for drum and bass. I have sections for like dance music. I have sections for fusion, uh, double bass. So each chapter is pretty much its own thing, you know? Okay. And you, you could take the, the funk section and use it for metal. It, it, it all depends on the volume you play, what you play. And the whole book is basically um, meant for a five piece kit. Because if I do a book with all my little toys, like, you know, a uh, feisty 12 inch bell, you know what I mean? Who's got that? Not many people. So I want to make it friendly for everyone and you decide what you want to use. So I pretty much give a concept. The whole book is based on snare, tom, tom, floor, kick, ride cymbal, crash, hi-hat, and then I do optional. Maybe a china, maybe a splash. You do your extra stuff. I wanted to show all the melody. So the way I did it, it's basically a five-piece kit setup. But at the end of each chapter, I have one beat. It's a double, like a two-measure beat. And I show you what I did with it. Now you take it on your own. So on that last beat, I'm going to use my bells, my electronics, just to give you an idea. And then you could take it on your own. There's a tambourine, a splash, a broken china. You know what I mean? But um, so there's a video with the book. I'm really happy. It's finally done. When it's coming out, I don't know. But it's not going to be next year. I think hopefully in the summer or right after the summer. You know? But I'm there, finally. Woo! Yeah. <laughs> I like it. It's a cool idea because uh, it will be a book for all the level of drummers because exactly. it's created on the idea of the standard drum set and it's a multi-style book. So it's it doesn't matter which is the kind of music you play because mm -hmm. you find everything you want in this book. Hey, everything's there. Every, I mean... Um, most of the guys that are playing linear, well, the prog guys are doing it now, the progressive, but it was like a, I don't know where it actually came from. I mean, I learned it when I was a kid in my first, with my first drum teacher, Jim Holland. And uh, the first beat that I discovered that was weird, but cool was um, Neil Peart in, uh, I think it's La Via Stagliano. Pert used that in the breakdown section. Um, what album was that? Wait, La Villa Strangiano is um, not Fair Which one is La it? La Villa Strangiato? Yeah. I think it's Hemispheres. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. La Villa Strangiato. I said, what the hell is that? I was a big Neil Pert fan. I still am. But that was one of my first introductions to Linear. And then when you look at the linear guys, most of them were gospel guys. You know what I mean? And, you know, it, it, uh, now it's like all over linear, you know? But um, I basically learned that, like I said, from that guy, Sonny Emery. And uh, he was not a metal guy at all. But when you put it into metal, everybody says, what the hell is that? You know what I mean? And it's hard to figure out on an album what somebody's doing because you could be using your left hand here, right hand here. So anyway, back to the book. The video will show you everything. But I think linear is pretty simple to read because everything's separate. No? Yeah. Ah. <laughs> this is a comment for, for you, for my friend Giovanni. Ah. Uh... <laughs> ah. But the drummer keeps on playing. <laughs> It's beautiful, beautiful. And uh, John, what about your new website? I checked the link uh, just two weeks ago. It's great. I love it. Yeah, man. I mean, uh, my friend Michael Grossman, he's a bassist, and he said, um, you need a web he did my old website. Uh, he's like my web webmaster. And he said, you need something more high tech. Because you know what, uh, I want to get into online drum lessons. I, I started doing that. If anybody's interested, you could visit my website, johnmacaluso.com. And uh, I'm now doing um, video lessons on Skype. And uh, it's working out great. Also, I wanted to kind of have the whole career mixed in one website. You know, if you want to hire me or you want to hear something I did in the past, I just kind of want everything in one. So... 
He recommended I do a new site. I just gave him all my stuff and he he runs with it. He does it. And he's a, he's a great web designer, Michael Grossman. So, yeah, I mean, it's cool. It's really important these days because um, if you're looking for an endorsement or something or, or a gig, it's hard to send somebody a couple of videos because you don't know really what they're into. They might hear you do double bass in the very beginning. And they're like, ah, next guy, because they don't like that stuff. So I think it's important to have something you could send a link and everything's there. You don't have to say a word. So that's what we pretty much did with this thing, you know, for studio work, session work. If you're interested in hiring me, I have samples of all different styles of music. You know, it's not just metal and prog and uh, for online drum lessons, uh, clinics, everything's pretty much there and really organized and pretty damn high tech looking. I had nothing to do with it. I just sent the material. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah. Check it out. It's Macaluso, M-A-C-A-L-U-S-O. A 416th notes. Macaluso. Oh. Hi, Maurizio. Hey, Maurizio. His foot rhythm is great. That's the Maurizio groove. It's actually kind of a sugar. Right, Maurizio? Yes. <laughs> a great drummer, great guy. I love him. Yeah, yeah. That pattern sounds meshuga, but uh, he recorded it many, many years ago. Mi ricordo. Mi ricordo. Transcircular Groove. Great yeah. album. <laughs> Bravo, Maurizio. Bravissimo. And uh, John, uh, for all the drummers around the world, around Italy, that are uh, looking for this live stream, are you available for online drum lessons? Of course, that's what I'm doing now. And I love it. I'm in my uh, sala prova, you know, I'm right there with the person. They can be, you know, I'm from New York. I used to have like 60 or 70 students and there's no way to teach them when I'm here. So I kind of went with the times and contacted all my old students. So I got some of the old ones. I got some new people and it's cool. It's people from Brazil, people from Japan all over the only hard thing is you know i can't play 24 hours in my studio so if you've got to book someone in australia the, the time difference is another world sometimes you got to do a lesson at nine in the morning you know i mean organizing the time difference around the world is the only complicated thing but it's great man i love it i really never thought i was going to like teaching online but i love it man so anybody interested you could go to my website again there's a, a little link for lessons or just um send me an email Johnny Mac drums at gmail.com. Yeah. Ah, okay. We have a question from Federico Ravaglia. Federico. Okay. This What's guy. In America, John? Yes. This guy needs an advice for uh, about uh, a good city to live if uh, someone wants to work at musicians. <laughs> You mean a good, in, in, in America, in Stati Uniti, where to go? Yes. Yeah, yeah. The funny thing is, man, here, here's the way it is. In America, depending on what style of music you're into, the coasts are very um, prejudiced towards music. New York and California are kind of like not metal cities or t uh, cities, uh, states. They kind of always want to go with the times. So what's happening now is what they like. When I was touring with Malmsteen, we play in New York, we'd have 2,000 people. As soon as we leave New York and you go to Ohio, it's like four or 5,000 people. And the South is the same. The coasts of America are very what is now. You know what I mean? So metal is not big. Prague is not big. Um, but as you travel through America in the middle, it's gigantic. So uh, also America's changed a lot. So it's a complete different place right now. And the funny thing is, for musicians, a lot of them are moving from California and New York. They're going south. Like the New Yorkers go to Florida. And a lot of people are going to Nashville, Tennessee, which New Yorkers would never go to Nashville. You know what I mean? So a lot of people now are going to Nashville, Tennessee. They're going to places in Texas. They're going to Florida. So the strange thing is, in the south is where really there's more metal And it's more Prague. That stuff is still kind of big in those places. So um, uh, depending on 
what you want to play um, and what is really open, you know, the two coasts are very, um, they're not the places. Like I wouldn't recommend moving to New York right now at all or California. There's a lot of weird stuff happening there. But yeah, Nashville is cool. Uh, Tampa is cool in Florida. There's places in Texas that are great, San Antonio, you know. But um, yeah, man, I mean, America is changing by the minute right now. But there's still hope for the American dream. There's still hope, you know what I mean? <ride> It's not over yet. <ride> okay. Federico, guarda, te l'ho scritto anche qui sotto. Qui nella pagina trovi tante interviste con musicisti che vivono all'estero, così ti fai un'idea anche di com'è lavorare in America, Giappone, Olanda, eccetera, eccetera. Ok? Spero possano esserti utili. Ok, John. Another question. Any plans for the future? about uh, live kicks tour albums yeah i'm doing a tour with jennifer batten one of my favorite people uh she was the guitarist of course you know michael jackson she played with jeff beck um john macaluso oh no um oh. she's an unbelievable guitar player unbelievable person jennifer batten and uh we're gonna start touring again in november and we well, i think we're starting in italy so we got some gigs in italy and then we're gonna go Uh, Poland, uh, Germany, we're going to go to Spain. So basically European tour. And uh, I think there's 10 gigs booked right now, but they're, they're going to book more. So we're definitely playing in Italy. I'll get you all the info. But uh, it's, it's different this time because we have a singer. It's going to be a trio and the bass player sings. And we're going to do uh, some Peter Gabriel stuff, um, some of her stuff. You know, we're going to do um, something different. It's not like a trio going out there and banging out fusion, you know. We're going to do songs, but she changes them a lot. Like we used to do, um, when I toured with her, we did Nirvana Teen Spirit, which it might seem weird to you, but she did all the, um, all the vocal lines on the guitar. We did the same with Rosanna from Toto, and she's brilliant. She plays rhythm and the vocal line, and it's, it's brilliant, man. So we're going to do a lot of stuff like that. But we also have a singer, so it's going to be a pretty diverse set list. But it's not like going out there and playing a Jeff Beck stuff from the 70s. We do some of that. We're also going to take some modern day stuff and vocal stuff and mess around with it. But um, yeah, in November, we're going to do that tour. But the main thing for me right now, Emiliano, is um, I got my recording studio. I should have did it years and years ago. And finally, I have recording capability. And as a session guy, you know, you get a call to do an album. The guy asks you how much, you give him the price, he's all happy. And then you say, oh, I have to hire a studio. And then you hear, you know, the crickets, uh, the grillo, grilli. Because um, these days, a lot of people can't afford that. You know what I mean? Or they don't want to pay for that. So the good thing is I have an amazing studio now. I've worked on it for a long time. I can record incredible drums. And um, my God, it sounds amazing. And it's affordable for anyone, any band, because basically I cut the studio cost. So people will not disappear. But yeah, I mean, it's, it's really important. Um, also, because now I can make my own records. Um, I could do sessions for people. I'm going to, I'm really like, I haven't been with the times as far as making videos and all the playthrough things. But, um, you know, because I had to hire a studio and I was working all the time. But a good thing is now with my own recording studio, i could also do lesson packages, you know, I can, with great sound. So, um, again, if anybody wants me to play on an album, um, my website, it's all there. It says hire me. All right. And you can, it'll have all the information on session work and lessons and everything else. Again, John But, um, you got to come check it out, man. It's a serious drum sound. Yeah. I'm finally on the other side of the glass. Here he is. There you go. Beautiful. Beautiful. We're a team, baby. We're a team. Yeah. Forever, bro. Yeah. So, John, we are perfectly in time. In time, Emiliano. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I think just me and you will understand this. <laughs> so, my brother, thanks a lot for this amazing interview. I'm uh, really, really happy to see you again. 
You too. When, I when hope do we to... do the carbonara? When do we do the quando carbonara in Siena? We have to do this uh, really, really early. Or catch a pepe. Or Grisha, Amatriciana. Amatriciana. Or maybe both. So I'm working. Okay. A little shout out to Promark. I just started using this stick. Yeah. And what it is, it's an extra long. There's a little extra space here. And it's like a catapult. I find that it, it you can really get more swing with it. You can play yeah. faster, actually, on the drum kit, because if you do the right motion, it works itself. So I got into this. Um, this is the new stick I'm using. But the Italian drummers, I think, would be more interested in this invention. <laughs> oh, my God. This is great. This is, this is for the Italian drummer. Okay. It works for the pasta. Yeah. No, no. See, this I'm, I'm marketing this. It's called the, the drum spatula, or in Napoli, the the the, the stick botapesce. Right? And um, yeah, this is great for your Italian drummer. You can cook, you can eat, and uh, you can play. Yeah, it's great. I think it's available on your web store, right? I'm gonna put up. If, if Maurizio is interested, we're looking for endorsers. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All the information will be on my site. Okay, <laughs> perfect. Oh, Emiliano, yeah. help me out. I give you 20%, man. Yeah, I mean, bro, business time. <laughs> okay, we have a last minute question from Federico. Jimmy. Jimmy. Advice Federico, how to Advice about practice routine. Um, you remember when I moved to Italy, I didn't have a drum set because I didn't really, I didn't really plan on staying here. And then I did the couch tour, sleeping on couches. I got the hotels. I went to your house. Before I knew it, I was living here. Now it's almost been 10 years, but it was unplanned. And uh, at the time, I had nowhere to practice because I didn't have a drum kit, remember? And yeah. I would just... I would just play gigs. My practice was playing gigs. But when I got the Labyrinth Thumb, they wanted me to do the album. I had to get back into it. So that's when I started really practicing again. I think it's like maybe five years ago. And uh, I spend most of my time in my style of probe. I, right now, I, I play at least three hours a day. I just play. You know, some, some days I have routines, but some days I'm just jamming. So basically, what I do in a week, because I play every day, I, I break it up. I said, this is groove day. And literally, I'm going to take my left pedal away. I'm going to take my toms away. And I make myself really, you know, force myself only to play beats. I put on the click different tempos. I do the death tempo where you could like smoke a cigarette between the snare hits. Bah! Really important for drummers to play slow. So I'll have um, groove day. Then I'll do chops day where I'm going to work on the stuff I'm really bad at. I shut the door. I make sure nobody can hear me. And I do a lot of the Bozio style thing where I go back and forth, hitting rims everywhere. But the more you do it, the more confidence you get. And it becomes something in your toolbox. So I have chops day where I'm just going nuts and I'm trying to make all the crazy stuff, but always to a click. You got to do it to a click because then when you take the click off, your it's embedded in your soul, you know what I mean? And then I'll do like um writing day where I'm in there and I try to just invent new beats. I say, you know, this has been done before. I'm gonna try something completely different than I've ever seen. And it might sound really awful all day long because it's like but maybe you get one beat out of that whole day and that could change everything. You could put it on an album or something. So, you know, it's kind of like a discovery day. And then um, uh, I do a lot of like um, tempo stuff. I'll put on a fast, fast tempo. And for three hours, I just play anything I could to that tempo. It's important to have tempos in your mind. Like instantly, I know 120. All right. I know 110. I could instantly feel it. And if you're playing live and you want to improv something, you kind of want to be confident that it's going to come out on one. 
You know what I mean? So it's important to work on different tempos so you know what fits. You know what I mean? You know what fits. Uh, so basically, yeah, every day has a different theme. It's like the beer of the month club, you know? You order the, the different beers. Like, oh, pumpkin spiced ale. They send you the beer of the month. This is, um, you know, the, everything has to be separated. Really disciplined with rehearsal. And in, in, in practice, don't worry about how you sound. It's not about that. It's about getting good at the things you suck at. And then you don't suck at them anymore. You know what I mean? Like discipline. Another thing, when you do the groove day, don't do a fill. It's incredible. It's like a disease drummers have. They have to do that fill. You know, you're playing the beat, and all of a sudden they throw in that one cafone. Don't do that. Discipline is everything. You know? so, a good um, song. A good song for the discipline is Billy Jean from Michael Jackson. No drum fill for five minutes. Tuk, it's amazing. Tuk, 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 tuk. It's Picaro. Picaro. And he does that one. Billy Jean, not my love. Do that. Do that. He hits the tom. Do that. Do that. That alone. Th th this is important. That alone is a cafone. It's like it's like the reverse, the reverse of a prog guy going crazy, and everybody goes, "Oh, he's so good." The way Picaro did it was minimal. That one thing in the right spot says he's a brilliant drummer. Phil Collins in the air tonight. That's all he needed to do his whole career. It's the best drum fill ever. You know, isn't it weird that the best drum fill ever was recorded by a guy named Phil? Cool, cool. Yeah, but in practicing discipline. Discipline. Yeah, always. And don't worry but about how you sound. And, and discipline. Yep. Don't worry about how you sound. Just a real quick story. There was an amazing French drummer when I was going to PIT. And uh, I won't get I won't go too much on it, but he um he was incredible. He came in, he was the best guy in the school. I'm not going to tell you his name because he's kind of famous, but the guy was so obsessed with competition and trying to impress people where we would hear him. He was in a practice room. Oh, there he is. He's incredible. But he would take a pizza box and he would tape a pizza box to the window so you couldn't see him practicing. To, to me, that's the reverse of what school should be. It should be a group of people who are not paranoid of each other, not a competition. They kind of help each other. So what I'm saying is, in practice, don't worry about what people are hearing. Practice is so you can get good when you're in front of people. So you should suck in practice. You should be horrible because if you play all the things you're good at, you're not practicing. You know what I'm saying? Yes, because it doesn't matter what you are doing in your practice room. It matters... I only what you do in front of the crowd or in the studio in front of, of a producer yeah it's like it's like jumping in the, the stage is like a battlefield the way i look at it it's like a battlefield you can't prepare for the stage never i, mean, I played a gigantic festival in 1989 with a band called power med and it was all double bass fast at that time now It's slow compared to what people do now. But in 1989, it was fast drumming and you had to be powerful. There was no samples, you know. So live, really kicking it. So I was so ready for this big festival. It was in Minnesota and all the bands were playing and it was going to be broadcast live and the whole thing. I get behind my kit. The first song, we kill it. I'm like, yeah. I jump up and all my water and beer, whatever I had back there, it spills onto my pedals. Ah. So now the second time, my feet are all over the place. I'm like a, I'm like a, a Bambi running on the ice, you know? I can't, <laughs> and it, it sounds, I listen to the tapes like And you can't prepare for that stuff. And you can't stand up and tell the audience, sorry guys, my pedals are wet right now. That's why I sound like shit. So the battlefield, you got to be ready for anything. Yeah. anything exactly. Bad. Exactly, Federico. Exactly. I hope I answered your question, Federico. Yeah. yeah. I, I missed what he wrote. Practicing is sparring. Live shows is fighting. Beautiful. Beautiful. There's another chorus. Write it yeah. down, Emiliano. <laughs> Thank you, Federico. But Emiliano, man, grazie mille per tutto. And, um, grazie uh, a te, John. Ci vediamo subito. You know, I hope to see you.
Yeah, me too. Ragazzi, grazie a tutti per essere stati con noi, grazie per i commenti. Thank you all guys for being with us, for all the comments, the questions. We really appreciate. So, John, have a nice day. Have a nice day, you guys. See you at the next live stream and uh, keep drumming. Perfetto, man. Ci vediamo. Non sai? Emiliano, aspetta. Yeah. Eccolo, Ciao fare... Manu! Ciao Emilia, ma quanto è scemo! Il giusto! Con questa, questa, sta. Quella eh. è il massimo, que quella va brevettata e venduta. Quella va brevettata e venduta. Bravo. Business plan. Bravo. Emiliano. Bravo. She says, Manu says, John, I try to cook, I try to cook now. So Manu tells me, John, you can eat. But you can't cook. <laughs> but your Siciliano pasta was really good. Eh, ah, sì, sì. Grazie, man. Ah, sì, sì. Okay, Ciao a sì, tutti, Muni. ragazzi. Okay, Emiliano, Muni, salute. Muni says goodbye and uh, he thanks you. Ciao, brother. Bye.